very well, thank you. I was a tomboy, so I didn't really know that, you know, there was any signs of creativity or becoming a fashion designer. Being a teenager, I was in my rebellious phase. I just wanted enough time to do other stuff and not have to sit down and read to teach myself. Uh, first experience with fashion would be, I can't remember how old I was, but I must have been like three. Um, my grandma used to make me a couple of Yoramu bars and I loved wearing them to church with Asho K actually. And then I have those pictures of me and my dad, me sitting in my dad's car, you know, feeling very cute in my matching gili and ikbili and Yoramu bar. And then I also remember that growing up, though I didn't get to wear fancy clothes often because I went to boarding house in primary school, but whenever I was on holiday, I wanted to match everything. So if I was wearing the Ramaba, my gilly color had to match, my bag, my bag had to match, my shoe. But I was a tomboy, so I didn't really know that, you know, there was any signs of creativity or becoming a fashion designer. I just knew that whatever day I didn't feel like I looked good or I didn't stuff the match, then it was going to be a bad day. I'll be moody all day. And whatever day I felt like, you know, everything was good, everything matched, then it would be a great day. Um, so as far back as when I was like three, four, five, I was exper playing and experimenting with stuff. As far as discovering fashion as a career, I, that happened sometime in my SS1. I was a science student in QC, and um, with most science students, we would just pick up uh, agric as vocational subject. And so my teacher was pregnant and she wasn't really teaching us. And at that point, you know, being a teenager, I was in my rebellious phase. I just wanted enough time to do other stuff and not have to sit down and read, teach myself. And I, I learned better by hearing as opposed to sitting there and studying and studying a book. So I just said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to look for an easier subject where I can get an easy A1 while I struggle with um, science, the physics, chemistry and biology and struggle to get my A1s there, uh, A2s or whatever. I want an easy A1. So I went to food and nutrition class, but being a uh, girls only school, it was a packed class. What's the next best thing? Since I always like doing stuff with my hands, throughout primary school, I'll always be the last one out, you know, painstakingly sewing that embroidery or whatever. Food and, uh, clothing and textile would not be a bad option. So I went to clothing and textile class. And on my very first day there, we went on an excursion to Yaba Tech, fashion section. And that's how I discovered fashion. And I always say this and it sounds funny. I said that was my born again moment. That's when I, like, it, all, it just dawned on me. This is what I'll be doing for the rest of my life. Um, so I found something that I could combine, sign all my loves. I love doing stuff in my hands. I love mathematics. I love um, being analytical. And I found, and I love technical drawing as well. And fashion was um, a way to, to, to experience and experiment all these things together. And more importantly, why? I always had a doubt that I would end up being a medical doctor. I just thought, I'm reading about Darwin's theory and this one's theory and that one's theory. I don't think I have it in me to come up with my own theory <laughs> in all these things, but I wanted to leave my, my mark in the sand of time. That was like the thing that always resonated in me growing up. I want to do something that the world will remember me for. I want to do something that will say, this is Adrian, Adrian did this. Um, and so, Fashion gave me that. Okay, so I can create stuff and it will be my creation and I don't have to leave mathematics behind because I will forever be dividing, adding, subtracting, you know, trying to make those patterns. And then with being doing technical drawing and being very precise, pattern drafting was that way to, you know, fully go into all of that. And then with drawing, you know, live drawing classes, designing, coming up with stuff. So it was everything wrapped up in one but then i couldn't tell anyone because at the time it was perceived that people that were fashion designers were dropouts um, people that couldn't make it doing anything else you know you're not good enough to be a science student you're not good enough to be an art student you're not good enough to be a business student okay just go lock mm -hmm. so go do fashion or something and then even when i got into fashion school eventually i was younger than the next person by about six years Everyone was way, way, way older than myself, you know. People that were already doing fashion, maybe as tailors and something, wanted to get a degree and better themselves. Yeah. So that was how I discovered fashion after this fashion eventually. <sighs> it was a tough one. 
2000, the year 2000, I graduated the secondary school. Um, so in SS3, we would take all the entrance exams to tertiary school. So we did jump and I just didn't put my heart into it. Like when everyone was studying, because I knew that I didn't want to go to medical school. And if I poured my heart into it, there's no way I would pass and I would get into medical school. So I just didn't really study. I spent my time doing other things. Uh, and I went late for my exam. Just so that I don't, ha I won't finish, and I just won't pass. <laughs> just because if I passed, I'll have no excuse. Remember, I couldn't tell my parents that I wanted to fashion. So I, after the exam, I told my dad that I, I didn't do well. I know I wouldn't pass. Like this would be the first exam you would get. You would hear that your daughter didn't pass and be prepared. I, I know I'm not going to pass. I'm not going to ace this one. So can I just get polyjam form so that you know I don't waste the year? And he just thought, okay, okay, okay. That, that's, a, that's a good idea. He didn't know why. So he bought me the form. And I kept it and I pondered and I thought, how am I going to approach this subject? How am I going to tell him? I hadn't told anyone. Um, so I delayed submitting my form. Back then, he had submitted to the bank, Afri Bank. And so I delayed submitting my form. And so the day before it was closing, I went to my dad and I told him that I've been struggling. I haven't submitted my form. What's wrong with you? Why haven't you done that? Isn't that? I said, okay, uh, I have something to discuss with you. Uh, I, I actually want to study fashion. <laughs> my dad blew a gasket. What's wrong with you? Are you all right? <laughs> there are people who, who are looking for people to pay their fees and you have parents who are willing to send you to tertiary school and you want to waste it on fashion. What is wrong with you? And by this time, I had gotten a daughter to scholarship for the rest of my tertiary education because I was going to study medicine. Uh, so, and this was my second scholarship. My first scholarship was in primary school, but I, I did not do it. I was supposed to go to gifted school. They picked a few students to go to school and then Nigerian government would pay. And then they'll groom you to become astronauts and stuff and stuff. And my dad said, no, it's in the north, you're not going. So I ended up going to QC. And then now this was my dad's second chance for the government to pay my fees. And I told him I wanted to do fashion. He was very upset. Uh, and he just, at, at the end of the long discussion, he just said, I know you're my daughter and I know you won't disappoint me. I know you'll do the right thing. By this, he was, you know, trying to use that upper hand and, you know, make me think I'm feeling science lab tech or something. I said, okay, I'll do the right thing. So I failed fashion. And I submitted, I did the right thing for myself. Uh, so I went to write my exam. I actually, I wrote sciences because I didn't have any art of it. So I, I filled in science subjects to write and I wrote chemistry, physics, and something else. English, I think, for my exam. Uh, days passed and then when the results came out, it was in the papers and the HOD of fine arts attended my church. So he came and told my dad, oh, your daughter was admitted into our art school. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? That's a joke. And he took the paper and saw it. It was very upset. My mom just said, okay, you know what? She's rebelled this far. Just let her get out of her system. Like, you know, and, you know, it's good for her children. You know, actually, girl, she don't have to so close for her children. You know, after one year, she would have punched herself. You know, all these teenagers, they just get very heady. Just let her do it. So that's how I got to art school basically so it wasn't like they agreed no it didn't it was a tough struggle i wrote jam two times again so i wrote jam eventually three times and i you know i passed the other two times but i just never told them that i passed i go admission and i never told them i go admission and i ended up finishing up my fashion course i was very young so my parents didn't understand how why it was so certain when i didn't have any mentors there was no one to look up to and say this person has walked this path and I know I'll be successful. Now, if they were able to send me abroad, I'm sure they won't worry so much. Okay, she'll make it abroad. They're designers, they're fashion houses, but they did not see. When I eventually, like, went, looking back now, I, I know how they must have felt. They were scared for me. We had such high hopes for her. She was very intelligent, very good science student. Why, why are you doing this? You know, do you want to be begging your pairs for the rest of your life? Do you want to be, that must have been how they felt. So they're just looking out for me. Not, and I, I don't know why I was sure, but I was sure. And I always prayed and I believed God heard me. And so since he always made a way, it must have been right. Uh, even when I got admitted, because I was a science student, I didn't have the required subject to study arts. And so uh, everyone looked at my results and was like, oh my goodness, fantastic result. What are you doing here? Who's making you do this? You're so young. Why are you come? Even the people in the art school, even the lecturers were like, what are you doing here? 
you're too young to make it this kind of decision like no one comes to art school you're not even sure you're gonna make it how are you no nobody chose this my parents don't even want it this is what i want okay so the very few that saw how adamant i was they supported me and i didn't get admitted i got admitted but i didn't get admitted because i didn't have the prerequisite subjects so the final registrar looked through and saw there was no fine art it's just like no, you can't come you can't get into art school <sighs> i was heartbroken i just said let your will be done god and i went back home maybe my parents will eventually win so i went back to continue my jam lesson and then just one day out of the blue someone comes to my house and says i'm looking for a drama staff uh, i'm from here about tech said they should come resume they've changed the requirements for entry to fashion to include clothing and textile because of you I'm like what so the school actually petitioned for me they sent the, they went to the national board of um, polytechnics to change the requirements just because of me and so that was a confirmation for me that that was what i was supposed to be doing so that's my fashion journey so and i had no other option but to succeed because a lot of things were on it my parents would have been upset my secondary school teachers didn't want me to study fashion you know when i went to get uh we had to bring a letter from school to say okay my teachers were like we're not going to write it no kiss girl goes to polytechnic no like we're not going to write like, this is my choice like this is what i want you can't do that. You're not polytechnic material. <sighs> so I just wanted everybody to see I didn't make a stupid choice. So I had to work extra hard and make sure I aced and you know, for my day one in school I made sure I graduated best student every year. Just so that everyone knew not that <laughs> it wasn't a mistake. So that's my fashion story. Um the experience with Tiffany Amber was great. I did my my second internship there first. Um, my one year internship was at Tiffany Amber and it was a fantastic experience because I got to see see someone living the kind of dream, my, my dream, like oh, she was doing international shows, she was working on collections, she had loads of clients and stuff and then being a part of that, working on those clothes, seeing the happiness it brought to people, made me believe I could do this for real someday. But even then, I didn't really know how it was going to pan out because fashion is expensive and most of the people that wear it succeed in being, uh, being in the eye of people at the time, you know, either came from uh, comfortable backgrounds, meaning they either had millionaire, billionaire parents and stuff. They had socialized friends who would celebrate them, um, organize stuff for them. But I had also interned at Zizikado my very first internship was at Zizikado and so I knew her story. She also started also from the scratch and I'm like, okay, so I can really do this. And she was very hardworking. She poured herself into her work. She always got to work for everyone else. So that was my first experience with work. And I learned a lot from her, her tenacity, her dedication. And so that she was, you know, being that dedicated to her work, she was blessed, being blessed every day. It was actually working out. She wasn't wasting her time. So I felt like, okay, you know what, Adri, if you really go after this thing one day at a time and do it well to the best of your ability, you will actually make a headway sometime. Yeah, so all my internships were great. And then after I graduated, I worked for a year at OA out of Africa, uh, rose to the head, became the head of design design team there as well, within a very short period. But the it wasn't fast paced and I was really young. So I just thought and I had worked in Tiffany Amber, my internship, and I knew how fast paced that was. So when they reached out to me to come back, I gladly took the offer because I, I wanted, I just wanted to, to, to do a lot of stuff in my youth, see places, work as hard as possible, challenge myself, see how far I could really go. Like, how would I handle stress? How would I do this? And I would get that kind of experience from Tiffany Amber more. So I chose to go back there and I spent another two years before I started my own brand. Uh, I would say um, the, the fear of failure, um, the fear of poverty, <laughs> the fear of, I'm just being honest. Um, what else? And um, the need to make, the, a lot of people that need to make people proud. I, I need to make sure my parents never regret, you know, sending me to school. 
I need to make sure that, you know, everyone that looked down at me and said, oh, you wouldn't make it, 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 it wouldn't work out, made the wrong decision. Even my friends at QC looked down on me because when they were in Unilag and OAU and UI, whenever we had reunions, they were just, mm. <laughs> she's in Polytechnic. Guess what she's even studying? She's not even studying RQ or anything like that or engineering, she's studying fashion. So it was always, they always made snide comments. So, you know, I just want to prove everyone wrong. Everyone has said those kind of things. Uh, my school, yeah, but like, they're really proud of me. And every induction, they, they keep talking about ages. So I better keep that name going <laughs> and not disappoint anybody. So it's just, I really don't want to disappoint people that look up to me. And I, I, it's just my own personal has always been, whether I, I became a medical doctor, a designer, whatever, business person, I just want to succeed. And I don't see that I'm black, Nigerian, being a fashion designer is not an ingredient for failure. Rather, I should make everything work and succeed at it. So that all those things keep me going. Um, well, honestly, sometimes Nigerian pieces can be overpriced. Something I see them like, that's the price we make, and that's it. But that said, you can't put a price on creativity. And what it takes to build a brand, it costs a lot of money. So it's not just the actual, sometimes people cost things and say, oh, how much is this fabric in the market? Uh, how much, they don't even, think about your other overhead so it's the cost of running business in Nigeria that's actually expensive and on top of that the cost of building a brand on top of that the price the fact that you can't put a price on creativity because most of the time when you say a Nigerian designer is expensive you're benchmarking them against other high street stores as opposed to other designers around the world so actually Nigerian designers are not expensive they are not so the only reason you will say they are expensive is because you're benchmarking them against high street brands. And yes, some are high street brands, but when you say Nigerian designers, they're not expensive. They are relatively well priced for the struggle that they have to go through to produce the kind of work that they do. The rest of all, by the wayside, literally um, time circumstances things will happen and only the strong will stay standing and the true designer i mean i'm sure the audience the not all audience the intuitive ones they would be able to know there should be a signature there should be something that is that is um, similar that runs through the whole i mean you see chanel 30 years ago you see a chanel today if if you're not if you're not told the dates, you almost can't tell the difference. Yes, you know it's different with different ideas for different collections, but you can see what they're about. Same thing with Miu Miu and other brands, Chloe, that have strong signatures. So a designer, a designer is a brand that has to be able to develop a signature that people can recognize. Now, the problem with Nigeria, why we see everybody's a designer is because we don't have fashion education. So people just call themselves whatever they are. And a lot of it too is contributed by the media, sorry. <laughs> I have to be honest. There are a lot of people who don't do their homework. And you know, so when they even see repeats, I mean, if the media can't be responsible, then the society, they're letting society down basically because they're the mouthpiece of society and they're educating the populace. So if, it, if, if the media says celebrity designer, everyone's gonna call them celebrity designer. So if, so if, you, we can, as a society, we need to educate ourselves more and stop falling for mediocrity. I think that's why everyone is able to just put anything. That's why they say in Nigeria, anything goes. It's able to sell us fake drugs, able to do whatever. It's because we don't value ourselves as people. So if you value art, if you're an art reporter, or a fashion reporter, and you value fashion, and you want to document your time properly for the future generations, then you would write the correct things. And you do your homework, and you do your research, and you, you know, present your country and your countrymen in the best light possible. Well, copyright laws in Nigeria are not 
Well, maybe we have not explored it as much as possible, but no one respects the other person. That's the first thing. I think people don't, like I said, they value um, the value system of, nine, of us as consumers or as a people or as creatives as well. Because it, it, there's nothing new under the sun, that's true. But there's also, a, there's, all, there's also someone doing something first and creating stuff. That's why we are creatives. We're supposed to, you know, we come up with new things. Not new out of the blues necessarily, but a new way of doing things is a, is a new thing. Innovation and stuff. And if we don't celebrate each other, if we don't write our history properly, then there's a problem. What, what, the, I don't, I haven't done so much about it. I'm just, you know, documenting my history myself and copywriting my designs so when the laws do become stronger when i do have the, the strength to do legal battles with the designers that are copying stuff then then we will go into that but if a tailor copies something they've done you should feel good but i mean copy is the best form of comp compliments you can get okay you're doing something really great that's what everyone wants to copy but they're not for so-called designers that's what i'm saying people don't even know what to call themselves is either you're just a dressmaker or you know so when you say you're a design brand and you put out a lookbook and you say this is my creation and you know you've copied it or you just verbatim lifted it off, off somebody's collection there's a problem with that and that's that comes from not valuing us and also the stylist and the media you know a stylist takes something you know even takes someone's design to another so-called designer, copy this and let's put it on that person, a celebrity, and you make so much noise about it. Design, a celebrity that values themselves won't wear a copy. Because if you say I'm an A-list celebrity, you say you are A-list. People look up to you, you don't wear copies. Imagine what it would be like if Kate Middleton wore copies. There's nothing wrong with wearing high streets. You know, but don't wear copies and then celebrate it and say this. We are the ones, like when we had copyright issues in the movie industry and with music, everyone was shouting, but it's so weird that it's the musicians and the, and the actors who are now celebrities or big and have solved a lot of their issues largely, encouraging copyright, lift, copy, uh, and encouraging creative, lifting of other people's creative ideas in the fashion industry. So it's just... I don't know. <laughs> I think we just need to respect each other more, value each other more, instead of taking it down to legal battles and things like that. It will help. But gladly, what contributes is lack of education. Because if people know, if people value themselves, if they know that though everyone is watching and everyone, like, you know, it will not be accepted. And you, I mean, you can't go stock a copy, like, even with the retailers that we have in Nigeria, top retail brands. Like if the Harolds of Nigeria, not Harold, but you know, there's several brands that now do retail. And you want to build a brand that will last and you're stocking copies of all that. It's just value system. I mean, if you value yourself and you've written out your goals, your values, your mission, all those things, will, you, you'll be careful about the decisions that you make. I just think we need to improve how we think as a people. That's all. And all half of these issues will be gone. Travel anywhere actually. I just I, I really love to travel. Okay. Yes, uh, there's no particular place, but I love exotic cultures. So around Africa, Middle East, as opposed to America, Europe. No, I love exotic cultures. I, I I'm inspired by cultures. So if I read about them, watch documentaries about those cultures, experience the cultures, see how people live. Because I want my clothes to have a direct relation with you. You see them and you already know where, how. Oh, this makes you feel so good. I love it when I hear people say that. Oh, this feels so good. Oh, I'm gonna wear this to that. I want that personal relation and that personal touch. So I study people and how their life events and how they react to them. And then those, in, those information inform how I create and how I want people to interact with my brand. Yeah, so.
ah, it's difficult to say because each one comes with its diff its uh, own challenges where my headspace was <laughs> and things like that so all of them are fun there's no favorite it's just as time passes you're like oh yeah i've improved like when you look back and you see other ones yeah that, 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 you know, that's that's an improvement on that one that's an improvement but there's no favorite because at each time i give each of the collections my, my very best <laughs> I I honestly don't know what the theme will be. I don't know what the theme will be yet for the summer collection. Uh, when we release in summer collections in Nigeria around the fashion week times, August, September. But right now I have no definite idea of what it's been. Hi, my name is Adrian Mustafiri, creative director of the fashion brand Adrian Mustafiri. Keep watching for me.